Well, folks, we have the biggest flip going on in the financial markets right now and in the stock market as well that we've seen in quite some time. And I want to go ahead and explain. This is not the first time I've seen a major flip in the market. And I want to go ahead and explain what's going on, why this is happening, and what it means for your money at the end of the day. So we're going to get into all these subjects. As somebody has been in this market 15 years, I've seen these flips come and go. And it's very important you understand what exactly is going on so hopefully you can capitalize and not get caught into some major traps and pitfalls that happen when this flip is going on, okay? So that's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Go very in depth on this. I appreciate y'all joining me. All I ask in return, smash a like and make sure you're subscribed here to the channel. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and get into this, guys. If you're looking to apply, join a private group, get access to all my premium course curriculums, my six and seven, eight figure Discord chat, all that good stuff. That's gonna be pinned comment down there. Fill out an application. We see if we can get you in there later this week, okay? Where we want to start out today's video is my mag six. So if you don't know, there's something I call my mag six, and it's basically a play on the whole magnificent seven thing. But this is my mag six in the public account. These are the biggest positions I have in there, the six figure plus positions in my public account, right? Which has been built inside the private group over the last uh, probably six years or so now at this point in time, right? We have Meta, that's the biggest position. Tesla is the second biggest position. Then we have Elf, PayPal, Amazon, Palantir. All those stocks have performed tremendous for us other than PayPal so far. That has been the lagger. And then the second worst stock, if we can call it that, is Amazon with a 60% gain. Outside of that, Palantir is at 186%. Elf's at over 2,500% now. Uh, Tesla's over 500%. And then uh, Meta's getting close to a 300% gain. Now, the reason I bring that up is look at what's happening in these stocks since the beginning of March. These stocks have clearly started to flutter out. Let's call it that, okay? Uh, the best stock of the bunch since March is, is Palantir, since the beginning of March, right? That stock's up 1%. And then other than that, every other one of the stocks is actually down. PayPal's down, Meta's down uh, over 1% since the beginning of March. Amazon's down almost 2% since the beginning of March. And, you know, we're only 11 or 12 days into the year so far, right? Uh, or into the uh, March, that is, right? Elf is down 6.6% so far in March. And then look at Tesla. Tesla's down about 11.5% since the beginning of March. I mean, that's a pretty pretty uh, big dramatic move. But let me show you this. This is where things start to get interesting. There are certain stocks I hold that are more like small cap stocks. And in a, a few of those stocks that I'm sure you guys know is one is Honest, one is Revolve, and another one's Cheesecake Factory, right? And look at these stocks' performance in the past four weeks. This is just in the past four weeks. Honest is up nearly 50% in the past four weeks, Revolve stock, which Revolve did not even report good earnings. I got to be honest, their earnings were not good, not good. But despite them reporting a, what I felt was poor earnings report, that stock is up 27.6% in the past four weeks. Cheesecake Factory is up about eight percentage points in the past four weeks, right? Man, if you get 8% every four weeks, you're going to be looking pretty good in this game, right? So we have a major divergence here in some of these small cap stocks doing tremendous why some of these other bigger stocks are starting to flutter out in a major way, right? Now check this out. This is in the past four weeks. I pulled up the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Qs, which is known as the NASDAQ, right? The NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, the Russell, which is small cap stocks, or Russell 2000, and then RSP, which is basically an equal weight on the S&P 500. Now, in the past four weeks, we have some pretty insane divergence going on now at this point in time. The Qs are up 2%, which is fine, right? 2, 2.5%. But the Russells basically doubled up that gain with over a 5 percentage point gain in that same four-week span. And look at the RSP. I mean, the RSP is up, you know, nearly 6% in the past four weeks, while the S&P 500 is up 3.7%. So quick, clearly, that means equal weights doing better, which ultimately should mean, it should, you know, in your brain, you should recognize that as smaller cap stocks or doing well in some of the bigger dog stocks because remember the S&P 500 is weighted based upon market cap okay very important the Dow Jones Industrial Average very important to understand that is weighted on share price the RSP equal weight is much more of an understanding of what's going on in the entire market the S&P 500 and even the Q's because Qs are also market uh, market cap weighted, those can give you uh, an unrealistic view of the market that maybe everything's great at a particular time if the 
biggest stocks are doing great or everything's really bad if the, the biggest stocks are doing bad at that particular time. RSP, I think, gives us a lot more of a, a realistic view of the market. And clearly, there's major divergence here between big dog stocks and smaller stocks, which means there could be actual real rotation going on where people are taking profits from the big dog stocks and now starting to plow that money into the smaller cap stocks in looking at that as an opportunity. Now, if you watch my reaction channel, I react to a lot of different videos on there. But I mean, it's almost on a weekly basis, at some point in time, we'll react to some sort of Tom Lee video because he goes on CNBC, different shows all the time. He'll go on Bloomberg. So at some point in time, almost every week, I end up reacting to a Tom Lee related video at some point in time, right? And if you've been following the whole Tom Lee story, Tom Lee believes there's like 50% upside for small cap stocks this year, which is absolutely mind blowing crazy prediction, right? 50% type upside, right? But that's his prediction. Now, and by the way, if you don't follow that channel, make sure you're following me on there. Jeremy Lafay makes money. It's, uh, we get pretty good views for how small our subscriber base is over on that channel, right? Now, the fascinating thing about this whole Tom Lee situation is, and when he's talked about 50% upside, folks, look at what I have in front of you right there. This is very important. The Russell is up a whole 2.6% so far this year. So if Tom Lee's prediction is is accurate even if it's remotely accurate we haven't even begun we haven't even begun to see the gains in small cap stocks if he's correct or if he's even remotely close to correct even if there's not 50 percent, let's say it's 30 percent. even if that's the the accurate statement that means we haven't even begun to see the gains in small caps yet like the the, the party's still coming the party's not even here if he's correct right and We'll see. But that's the important thing to remember. Now, next up here, you've got to understand the psychology of the market, right, in a, in a market cycle. You go through some sort of bear market, and then there's disbelief, and then there's some hope out there, right? And then as the market continues to rally, you get some optimism and some belief. And then over time, you start to have thrill, and then, you know, kind of at the top, it's euphoria, and you can only see upside. It's impossible for you to see downside, right? Then you might get uh, some fluctuations, you get some complacency in the market, and then you start getting some drops in the market again, and the anxiety comes in, and the denial, and panic, and depression, and anger, and disbelief, and you go through all those cycles, and you know, if you go through the market from 2020 to the end of 2022, we literally went through every stage of that market from if the beginning of 2020 through the end of 2022, we went through every single stage there. I can literally point you to it and tell you exactly when the anger stage was. That was the anger stage was in summertime and into early fall time, 2022. That was anger stage. And then from there, it was just like despair and depression. And then stocks started to come back and no one believed it at first. And then slowly as you got into Q1 2023, which stocks bottomed around October of 2022, but as you got into like the first quarter, then the optimism started, the belief started as you went further into 23, and now we're here in March of 2024, right? But many times what happens is at first you'll see large cap stock, you'll see the entire market kind of bottom, right? But at first people are scared to kind of get out there in the market. So what they do is a lot of times they'll buy large cap stocks. And when I say people, I'm not just talking about individual Joe's at home buying stocks on Fidelity and Robinhood and TD Ameritrade. I'm also speaking about hedge fund managers. They get out there and, and remember, how did you get the market to drop substantially? Crazy amounts of selling pressure. You don't get just crazy amounts of selling pressure from retail. You get it from institutional money. You get it from hedge funds. Okay. So when they're ready to get back out there, they want to go out there and buy what? large cap stocks, or they just want to buy like S&P 500 index fund, the Q's, something like that. And we know if you put money in the S&P 500, right, or you put money in the Q's, your, your, most of your money is going to the largest cap stocks, right? And very small amounts is going to other stocks. So when you first get out there, people are scared. They say, I want the big stock. Give me Apple, give me Microsoft, give me Google, and ah, that's about it. Give me S&P 500, give me the Q's, and that's about it, right? And as time ticks on and those stocks do better, then s slowly over time, people will start to look out there and say, okay, what else is out there? And so they move into maybe some smaller uh, big techs. Okay, let's call them still big techs, but they're not the mega caps. And then what happens is as that cycle goes on, eventually you reach a tipping point where it seems like gains in the large big dogs are starting to come, you know, are starting to be very hard to come by. 
So then people start looking for small cap opportunities. This is exactly what we're seeing. If you think about the market, right? Think about mega cap tech, right? Well, can you get any gains in Apple and Google? The answer is no, you can't. Those stocks have actually lost value this year, right? So people are looking out there like, okay, I'm not going to get gains in, in Google or Apple. Then people will look out there and they say, okay, what about, you know, Microsoft? Well, even Microsoft, the gains are starting to get harder to come by. And the Amazons, right? And now even very, very recently, even stocks like Meta and NVIDIA are starting to get a little harder to get gains. And obviously Tesla's in the group of kind of like the Apple that you're definitely not getting gains. You're just getting losses right now, right? As a Tesla shareholder, I can say that. It's, it's all we're seeing right now is losses and losses and losses, at least this year, right? So far. And so people get impatient and they start saying, okay, like we got we to gotta rotate out. We've got to find where the next arbitrage in the, is in this market. The NVIDIAs, the Metas, the Apples and the Googles and those sorts of stocks that were the crown jewels of 2023, they look at those stocks as played out now. And they say, these stocks are played out. We need to go find smalls. We need to go find the next opportunities to make 50% on our money, 100% on our money, triple up our money, those sorts of things. So that's where small caps come in. And then in terms of how long these cycles usually last for, in terms of large cap outperformance, that can last anywhere from about 12 to 24 months, right? And we, we watched that play out all the way from Q4 of 2024 all the way to Q1 of 2024, right? Or excuse me, from it started in Q4 of 2022, and ran all the way through to Q1 of 2024, right? And then small cap outperformance, that can last usually six to 18 months, depending upon how bullish you're really gonna get in that cycle. You know, six months if it's a pretty short stay, 18 months if you're like really rolling for a long time and the economy can stay good during that time period and those sorts of things, right? And as you see more outperformance in let's say small caps, it attracts more and more people over. Because people start seeing other people making gains. The hedge fund manager sees his, his peer over there making a lot of money and he says, dang, I need to get in on this fund. And then the retail investor says, oh, what am I doing in Apple stock? I'm not making any money in this stock. This stock's going nowhere for this year. I need to be over here in XYZ stock that is all getting all the gains, right? I need to be over in this party over here. So that's what happens. And you've got to understand that's how these market cycles work now, right? Now, on top of that, people start to look, as you get that large cap, mega cap, huge gains, people start to look at those stocks and they say, there's no more opportunity in those big dogs. They're overvalued or they're fairly valued, so there's just no more opportunity. And I need to catch up to others' gains because they've seen others make a lot of money. It could be hedge fund managers, it can be a retail investor, whatever, right? If, I'll put it to you like this, right? The public account was, uh, I believe it was under a million dollars at the low, just under a million dollars in late 2022, right? And obviously that counts climbed back a lot. It's nearly 2.1 million now. It, it peaked recently at $2.2 million. So you could look at something like that and you say, man, man, I wish I was buying. I missed out on the gains, right? Missed out on the gains. Wrong. Let me show you this. This is very important. When I got in the market, right? Back in 08, 09. And as those, I invested, you know, 2010, 2011, really got my portfolio going in 2011, 2012, in terms of, you know, really amping up the amount of money I was able to funnel links. I got the job at Quick Trip, started making good money and things like that, right? I could have looked out at that. And by the way, during all those years that I was really starting to get in the market and get my account built and rolling, the S&P 500 was between about 1,000 and 1,500. Now, it I could look back at like 1990 and shoot, you know, back in the early 90s, the, the uh, S&P 500 was like 300, 400 points, right? So I could have easily looked down at that time and said, I missed out on the gains. I missed out on the money. I mean, the S&P 500 used to be 300. I should have been buying when I was one year old. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? I should have been buying. I missed out on the gains. Now I'm buying S&P 500, 1500? Come on, man. It was 300 not that long ago. It was 400. It was 500. I'm getting ripped off. I could have looked at it like that, right? It was, that would have been a very bad choice on my part if I did look at it like that and I said, I don't want this market because, you know, I missed out on all the money. That's a silly way of looking at it. You look at real estate like that. You say, oh, you know, you could have looked at real estate 10 years ago and said, oh my gosh, these homes are up so much since 2009. They're up so much since 1989. They're up so much since 1969. And you could have said, oh, I should never buy a home. Well, shoot, you should have bought a home, right? You should have bought a home. 
NVIDIA, right? You could look at this stock. And this was, you know, a stock that in this five-year span or so, right, from late 2015 to late 2020, this stock went up 2,000, over 2,000%. And you could have done all your study on NVIDIA and you could have thought, man, it's such a great company, blah, blah, blah. But you could have looked at that stock and you said that I missed out on all the money. I missed out on all the gains. It, it's up 2,000%. I'm a clown if I buy this stock now. Like, are you kidding me? I'm going to buy it after it went through this major insane run. I'm going to pay $132 a share for this stock. I, I'm a clown if I do that. You could have looked at it that way, right, right? I missed out on all the money. But no, you didn't. You didn't miss out on all the money. All you would have done is if you stayed on the sideline and said, ah, you know what, I really like this stock, but it's, it's up so much, I, I shouldn't buy it. You missed out on a 500% plus gain. This is a gain since that time period through now, right? So, yeah, you missed out on the 2,152% gain, but if you chose to stay on the sideline, you also missed out on the 579% gain as well. So you, you weren't a clown. Like, NVIDIA is a great company. Like, you probably would have been much better off buying the stock versus saying, oh, you can't, can't do this. Plus, by the way, you got a massive, insane, sweet buying opportunity in 2022, which was unbelievable, right? So that's very important to understand that right there. You didn't miss out on it. It didn't all go away. It, it's like, you know, everybody thinks like, oh, you know, I'm going to buy right at the top and it's only going to go down for the rest of history. No, no, it's not the way this works. Now, you want to build an overall great portfolio. Do not get cute. Do not get cute with your portfolio, okay? Listen, I know some of you guys are trying to get cute. You're going to end up producing much worse returns for yourself over the next three to five years. You will, you will, you will. Don't get cute, okay? What does it mean to get cute? So getting cute with a portfolio is thinking like, you know what, small cap stocks, Tom Lee says 50% upside. I'm going to only buy small cap stocks. I'm just going to go super heavy on small cap stocks and then I'll figure it out from there. Okay. Or a thought process of like, you know, all these semiconductor stocks are running. They got the momentum up until maybe very, very recently. Uh, so you know what? I'm just going to go super heavy on uh, semiconductor stocks for the next six months because I think they're just going to do amazing. So I'm only going to buy semis. Those are flawed logic. Those are trying to get too cute around a portfolio and trying to chase performance instead of thinking about the next several years with these companies and how these companies are going to develop over the next several years. If you're thinking about, you know, this is, the, this is a play, they're going to rotate the money over here and you're trying to get too cute, it's going to produce you worse results over time. Trust me, it's just, it's not the thing. I pay attention to all this stuff and I'm just here to tell you, 15 years plus in the market, this is not, this is not it, okay? You might think it's it, but trust me, it's not it. Build a great overall portfolio. If you look at the Patreon portfolio, this is the definition of a great constructed portfolio overall. If you look at the positions, right, I have a big cap there, I have a big cap there, big cap here, big cap here. Then I have small cap, small cap, small cap, small caps there. I have a mega cap there, mega cap there, and another mega cap. And then I have some a couple mid caps, and I have some hedges overall in the portfolio. That's a truly great portfolio. I'm covered along a lot of bases. I'm ready for a whole bunch of different stuff to happen. That's great construction of a portfolio. I'm not trying to get too cute. I'm not saying, you know what, the small caps, Tom Lee, 50%. You know what, I need to sell out of Meta. I need to sell out of Amazon. I need to sell out of PayPal. I need to sell out of uh, Shopify. I need to rotate all my money into Fubo and, uh, you know, Avant and, 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 you know, Honest and Revolve. No, 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 okay? Or saying, oh, you know what, the semiconductor stocks have had so much momentum. Let me shift out of all these stocks and let me buy NVIDIA for the short term and Broadcom. No. No, no, no. Build an overall great portfolio that's there for the next several years, not the next few months, and hoping you get it right. Okay, you're just going to screw your portfolio up and you're screw your mentality up in a massive way and thinking you can time these things out and get in and get out. Oh, my gosh. It, it, no, Okay. Think about this for a moment. Patreon portfolio, which by the way, if you ever want to join my Patreon, that's in the description area down there, right? You can support my content, see the moves I'm making every single week, the buys and the sells and all that good stuff. That's in the, the, the description area if you're interested. The Patreon portfolio is ready for anything. Risk on market, I'm going to make 
flip and flapjack and bank with this portfolio if we keep going risk on here. If the market crashes, I'm looking pretty flip and flapjack and good. And the reason being is I got a lot of companies that even in a crashing market will hold up decent in this portfolio. And I have hedges on that will print money in a crashing market, right? If the market does nothing, that's perfectly fine as well. I own several stocks in there that are dividend paying stocks that are going to continue to produce me cash flow. That even if the market's going nowhere, I'm going to continue to, that money's going to be pouring in month after month after month in dividends. Let's say, you know, small cap, is say it's a small cap market, right? And the indexes are stagnant. You can't get any gains from the big dogs. Well, I own several small caps in that portfolio. So I'm going to be looking really, really, really good. Let's say it's a 2023 playbook and smalls aren't performing and hedges aren't performing, but you know what is mega cap. Well, I own several different mega caps in that portfolio. So I'm going to be looking good there. If there's a bad economy, I own several companies in there, plus my hedges that will perform just fine even in a bad economy. If there's a good economy, I got several stocks in there that will have insane upside. So regardless what you throw at the at, at this portfolio, like I'm ready for whatever. Like give me an S&P 500 that goes up 10% over the next six months. Give me one that goes down over the, the next 10% over the next six months, 20%. It doesn't matter. Give me whatever and I'm ready for it. It's, that's a real portfolio. That's not trying to get too cute around these things, right? Now, if you ever have studied other subjects, right? If you want to truly be great at something, you, there's a, there's a, it's an art, but it's also a science. There's a specific way of doing it. Even like music, for instance, the Max Martin, just unbelievable. I mean, his, his, what he's done in the music game is unparalleled. I mean, it's unparalleled when you look at how many big songs that man's been part of, right? He understands like there's a science behind this and this is how you do it. It's not just random, right? If you want to learn how to throw a baseball great or a football great, there's a, spe a specific way you need to do, you know, like learn and teach your body how to do this, right? It's not like just like you just do it anyway. No, if you're a great golfer, there's a very exact way you need to swing your club to get the most power and most accuracy out of it. You can't, you don't just go out there and just swing it. However, you could do that, but you're not going to be very good. Your results are going to be very poor. And so the same exact thing is not only true in sports or music, it's also true in your portfolio. There's a science to this. There's a specific way of building a portfolio properly that can withstand any market that can thrive in any market over time, right? If we look at the public account, for instance, there's a public account returns calculated by Fidelity Investments versus S&P 500. We have crushed it. This is five year. Fidelity has us at 28.73% versus S&P 500 14.7. That's basically a double up year in and year out of the of the S&P 500 and then the don't even compare me to bonds. It's like a night and day difference, right? In that I'm by no means perfect and I'm still destroying the market. I've made several big mistakes still destroying the market, right? This is what balance gets you. And by the way, our one year rate of return also absolutely obliterates the market. Balanced portfolio if I did not stay balanced over the years, I can tell you, we wouldn't have even kept up with the S&P 500. We would have significantly underperformed the S&P 500 in the public account instead of massively outperforming the S&P 500 over the past five years. Balance takes you a long way in understanding exactly how to position your portfolio to withstand bear markets and get through to the other side. Another big mistake I've been fortunate to avoid in the public account, not getting into margin. Margin. I have the account hooked up if I ever want to do margin, but I never margin out money. I have $2 million of extra money I can margin out if I wanted to. I don't do it. Why don't I do it? Listen, man, if I had been margining the public account, I could have lost potentially the whole portfolio in 2022. Because of how bad that bear market went, it was, it was you know, the NASDAQ was 30, about 38% peak to trough down in a matter of, uh, you know, 12 months or so, if not less than 12 months. That's insanity. I mean, that's, that's you know, the, the, the biggest drop we've really seen since the great financial crisis when the NASDAQ fell over 50%. So when you think about it from that context, I could have lost that entire portfolio. That portfolio, instead of saying $2 million plus million today, it could be zero if I was margining out, right? Because a margin would have eaten me alive during that massive bear market. It would have eaten me alive. And then the interest, oh my gosh, it would have been a disaster. So I understand when you're in these bull cycles and you're very excited and you're making a lot of money, it's, it looks like, man, dang, I'm making so many gains. Like, you know, why am I not margin? I mean, look at 9.25% on a million plus. I've gotten 
calculated by fidelity in the past year, I mean, shoot, it looks like it would have been great. No, it wouldn't have. No, it wouldn't have. Trust me on that. <laughs> it, it always looks. It's it, it's like you ever walk through the desert, and it's a hot hot day. Uh, well, maybe not through the desert, but been driving or something, and you look out, and it looks like there's water out there, and you're like, what is that? A lake out there? And then you keep driving toward it, and it's just you, it's just a mirage. You, you, there's no lake actually there, right? That's that's things like this. It, it's just a mirage there to trick you. Okay, call options. People love buying call options during bull markets. Why? Well, because they're always making money, right? A lot of people have been playing NVIDIA call options here recently because, I mean, NVIDIA's just been printing money, printing money. So when you're in a bull market, everybody starts to get attracted to these sorts of things. The truth is the only time call options should actually be purchased for the most part is actually when you're in a bear market. When you're in a bear market, that's at least a time period when you might want to look out there to two-year-out call options, some leaps, Two years out, because, you know, generally speaking, if you're already in a bear market that's pretty severe, the, you know, there's a good probability in the next year or two things will recover and you'll make a lot of money on those calls. But outside of that, actually, call options are usually a bad buy, especially when the more the bullish market is, the more all-time highs you're hitting, the worse decision it is to usually buy call options, the more risk you're setting yourself up, especially if it's anything out as far as the date goes. You're setting yourself up for a major, major risk. So that's another thing. You don't want to get caught into that crap, right? I was speaking to a friend this weekend uh, about Bitcoin, actually. And, you know, we were talking about the cycles and I was like, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin goes, you know, 100K to 200, 250 in the in this cycle. I wouldn't be surprised, right? I, I'm not going to make any sort of bet that it's going to go there, but I wouldn't be surprised. And, and he was just like, you know, really talking it up and things like that. And I was just like, but listen, you know, it's, I told him, it's so easy to see the upside during the bull run. It's so easy to put in infinite numbers on these things and think they're just going to go up forever and all of eternity. And, you know, it's just up, up and away and, and all these sorts of things. It's so easy to only see the upside when you're in the bull cycle. Just like when you're in the bear cycle, right? It's so easy to get so negative not want to buy anything. I mean, people are trampling over themselves. I know people personally, personally, several of them that are trampling over themselves to buy Bitcoin at $72,000 right now. And these same people refuse to buy it in the fourth quarter of 2022. It's clownery. That's clownery. When you refuse to buy something when the price is low because the sentiment's bad and you are putting in your hard-earned money towards something when the price is sky high and, you know, it's like, well, you know, because sentiment's really good now, it's clownery. You've got to understand, like, you know, the biggest money's made when no one wants a piece of that. And there's going to be a day in the future when no one wants a piece of it. Just as there is with all stocks, it comes and it goes, right? And you've got to understand the emotions, your body's playing with you, your mind's playing with you in these sorts of markets. And people don't understand how they're getting so wrapped up emotionally thinking about these things rather than thinking about them practically. And I've talked to you guys about this before, the stoic, right? Like you've got to take all emotion out of money related things. Your emotions are there to play with you. Whenever you're in the markets, right? And your emotions are there to tell you in a bear market not to buy, why it's all just going to keep going lower for all of eternity. And, you know, you're just throwing your money away. And your emotions are also there to play with you when you've gone through massive bull cycles and just telling you to take more risk and more risk and more risk. And the next thing's going to be, you know, if you look at something like Bitcoin, it's, it's very shortly from here, the next thing is going to be forget Bitcoin altcoins. Promise you that we're going there next. I promise you we're going there next. That's what everybody's going to say. They're going to say, forget Bitcoin, forget Ethereum. Now it's about the alts. And the same thing happens in the stock market, right? Build an overall great portfolio. Don't get emotion about this stuff. And at the end of the day, position yourself to get great gains year after year after year for the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years. And let the rest be what the rest is going to be. It's going to be a sideshow. It's going to be a clown show. And a lot of people will get absolutely obliterated the next time we have the big bear cycle, which that will be an unemployment bear cycle, and that will be very painful. And a lot of people are going to get wrecked in that. Trust me on that. Don't get caught up in the emotions. Build a great portfolio that you're proud of in bear markets and bull markets. Okay, 
That's the name of this game, folks. All right. So little words of wisdom there. Hope you really got a lot of value out of this. Let me know in the comment section if you did. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're looking to apply, join a private group, get around myself, like-minded investors, get access to all my premium courses, everything like that. Check out the pin comment down there, fill out an application. We'll see if we can get you in there uh, maybe later this week or next week. Okay. Much love and have a great day.